This is an audio recording of an article I wrote for the Journal of the Masonic Society, the Fall 2019 edition, issue number 46. Personal Ritual, a Contemplative Tool for Masonry Beyond the Lodge. Supreme Architect of the Universe, wilt thou be pleased so to influence our hearts and minds that we may each one of us practice out of the lodge those great moral duties which are inculcated in it. Amen. So mote it be. This excerpt from a traditional closing prayer is just one of many points in Masonic ritual, emphasizing that the virtues extolled by the craft are meant to extend into all parts of our lives. In the closing charge, it is further declared, quote, Every human being has a claim upon your kind offices. Do good unto all. End quote. In this article, we will consider how the performance of personal rituals can help us be more successful in achieving these aims. One of the most ancient and powerful tools masonry offers for extending its benefits is ritual itself and it can serve us outside the lodge as well as within it. In its broadest sense, ritual includes any set of particular behaviors regularly performed. Thus, ritual can be as simple and commonplace as the habitual manner in which a man shaves or ties his necktie, or as complicated and intentional as an initiation ceremony. Our lives are filled with ritual and for good reason. Ritual naturally assists us with developing familiarity, consistency, and efficiency in many things. In a Scientific American article, behavioral scientists reviewed research revealing that rituals can also enhance confidence, motivation, attention, execution, and emotional stability. Studies have further shown that rituals can reinforce desired behaviors, improve focus and our sense of self-control, help accomplish lasting change, and enhance the degree to which we appreciate the value of something. There is a good chance that you are already practicing some form of personal ritual relevant to living the craft in your everyday life. For example, consider the wearing of a Masonic ring, tie tack, or ball cap. Whenever you routinely put on a Masonic emblem before going out in public, you are ritually identifying yourself to others as a member of the fraternity. You can boost the power of these little rituals by engaging them with more conscious intention. For example, while putting on a Masonic ring, and at different times while you wear it, you might look at it and offer a little prayer such as this. Great architect of the universe, help me regard this ring as a constant sign to others and a reminder to myself that I am a representative and an agent of masonry. Assist me in remembering to circumscribe my desires and keep my passions within due bounds and to act upon the square with everyone. Amen. So mote it be. Many spiritual traditions around the globe recommend or require ritual observances at routine times each day. Masons can make fitting use of this practice by recognizing that our tradition repeatedly highlights three important moments, which are the beginning, midpoint, and end of the day. Your daily Masonic personal rituals might therefore begin upon rising in the morning, facing east and recalling the symbolism of the master of the lodge, his duties, regalia, and the column of wisdom. As with the ring, a prayer could be said to ask for divine assistance in recognizing opportunities and actually applying those things in your life. Then at midday, you would face south and perform a similar process with the symbolism of the junior warden and the column of beauty. Finally, at the end of your workday, around dusk, or before retiring for sleep, you would turn to the west and engage the symbolism of the senior warden and the column of strength. Another form of daily personal ritual 
is a short inspirational reading from your jurisdiction's monitor, a favorite Masonic reference text, or from a book published for this specific purpose. Two options currently available are Level Steps, 100 Daily Meditations for Freemasons, and A Masonic Thought for Each Day of the Year. Such readings can be done at any time, but a morning reading offers the opportunity to establish a theme for incorporation into your thoughts and actions throughout the day. As an adjunct or alternative to ritualized reading, consider ending each day with a personal journal entry, reflecting upon your experience and making connections with the lessons of the craft. There are brothers who keep a Masonic shrine in their home, performing personal rituals of routinely visiting it, tending to it, their venerating Masonry's place in their lives, and offering prayers to the great architect of the universe according to their own spiritual beliefs and traditions. Such a shrine can be as simple or elaborate as you wish, with items that can be purchased or handcrafted. A basic starting place could be emulating a Masonic altar with your choice of a sacred text, square and compass, and perhaps three candles. Other possibilities could include other working tools, tracing boards, symbolic columns, incense, and pictures of Masonic role models or mythic characters such as our ancient Three Grand Masters. As a final category of personal rituals for Masonry beyond the Lodge, think about how you prepare for fraternal meetings. We are taught that the Lodge is a sacred retreat from the profane world, a place where we are to focus on reverent fellowship rededicating ourselves to Masonic principles, making new Masons, and supporting one another with instruction and good counsel. Toward those ends, many of our monitors and manuals remind us, quote, to begin well is the most likely means to end well, and it has been properly remarked that when order and method are neglected at the beginning, they will be seldom found to take place at the end. To conduct these ceremonies with propriety ought to be the peculiar study of every Mason, especially of those who have the honor to rule in our assemblies. To persons who are dignified, every eye is naturally directed for propriety of conduct and behavior. The intent of the meeting becomes the sole object of attention." End quote. Personal rituals can help make the shift into an appropriate attitude and state of mind for entering the lodge and undertaking its work. Whether you have time for a shower or a quick washing of your hands and face, a ritualized cleansing can provide the opportunity to release preoccupations and other matters. It can also serve as an affirmation that masonry is worthy of you coming to her door in a refreshed and pleasant condition. Similarly, changing clothes before a meeting can be a moment to remember having done so in the preparation room in connection with various degrees. You might recall lessons associated with different items of clothing or with their corresponding parts of the body. For example, while putting on a necktie, you could think about the cable toe or the mystic tie. When you have actually entered the building, Signing the register can be done as symbolic of renewing your commitment to the fraternity. The act of putting on your apron is highly recommended as a moment for solemn remembrance of its symbolism and for a silent affirmation that you are getting down to business as a Mason. Lastly, at the Tyler station, you can pause for a very brief moment in order to mindfully take that first step across the threshold into our sacred space. You would take that step as an entry into deeper communion with deity and your brethren, perhaps even willing yourself to feel tingles of awe, reverence, joy, and love, as if the air of the lodge room itself was vibrating with those qualities. There are endless possibilities for incorporating routine actions into our everyday lives to help us remember 
and apply the teachings of masonry. Many of them take very little time, whether intertwining with our ordinary activities or giving us moments of respite from them. Others, such as inspirational reading or keeping and visiting a Masonic shrine, may assist us in taking more time to dive deeper into Masonic contemplation. In any case, personal rituals have much to offer for living Masonry beyond the Lodge, and we have much to gain by sharing with each other how we engage them and supporting and encouraging each other in employing this powerful tool.